Ukraine's defense forces continue to try to repel Russia's invading army. On Friday, President Joe Biden marked the second anniversary of Russia's invasion by announcing sanctions on 500 individuals and entities linked to the invasion and the death in a Russian prison of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. He said Russian President Vladimir Putin badly miscalculated the courage of the people of Ukraine. Putin believed he could easily bend the will and break the resolve of the free people of Ukraine, that he could roll into Ukraine and he would roll over them. Two years later, he remains wrong. Kiev is still standing, Ukraine is still free, and the people of Ukraine remain unbowed and unbroken in the face of Putin's vigorous onslaught. Biden said he met with Navalny's widow and daughter Thursday in California and assured them he will make sure Putin pays a price for what he termed Russian aggression abroad and repression at home. During a visit to Argentina, Secretary of State Antony Blinken answered a question from Voice of America, saying he believes sanctions will have a long-term impact on Russia's ability to modernize its economy, military, and energy sector. And Blinken did not forget Navalny. We're also taking action against three individuals, specifically in connection with the death of Alexei Navalny, uh, the prison warden, the regional prison head, the deputy director of the Federal Penitentiary Service. In Moscow, Putin took part in a Defender of the Fatherland Day patriotic ceremony and hailed what he termed the authentic heroes fighting in Ukraine. Some observers say that the sudden death of Navalny in Russian custody reveals that Putin is vulnerable. I don't think that he would have murdered Alexei Navalny if he was feeling confident. I think that's the sign of a man who's feeling scared. And Putin is scared of, of losing power because if he lose, loses power, he dies. Russia says Navalny died of natural causes. Browder welcomed the new set of sanctions on Moscow, but he said the Kremlin still enjoys one major source of revenue. So as long as Russia continue to sell their oil, they'll be able to continue buying missiles and bullets and pay for soldiers, and the war will carry on. And we haven't been able to get our head around that. And that's, that is the elephant in the room. Democratic Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer arrived in Ukraine on Friday with a group of senators to try to reassure Ukrainians that the U.S. Congress will deliver another round of U.S. aid even as a package that would provide $60 billion to Kyiv is stalled in the Republican-controlled U.S. House of Representatives. Cindy Sane, VOA News.